What is up, guys? Today I'm here with a question. What exactly is a sandwich? You wouldn't think there would be much debate. We all know what a sandwich is. It's this. Or maybe this. Perhaps the better question is, what isn't a sandwich? Where do we draw the line? This is what people disagree on. Some people would say burgers are sandwiches. Others would include hot dogs, while still more would suggest ice cream sandwiches. My guy RSD hooked me up with this chart that attempts to examine and categorize this a bit. It basically boils down to two dimensions, ingredients and expedience. I, I mean, structure. More simply, the two questions are, what can a sandwich be made out of on a scale from bread to not bread? And what can a sandwich contain on a scale from traditional ingredients to more or less anything? Personally, I'm a believer that what makes a sandwich is being placed between two pieces of bread, which according to the chart makes me a structure purist ingredient rebel. This is both a necessary and sufficient condition. Literally anything contained between two pieces of bread is a sandwich and nothing is without the bread. What you personally count as bread may vary though, and I don't have a precise answer for where to draw the line. Of course, and this is really the point of this video, this issue extends to a lot more than just sandwiches. When we're young, we're often taught what things are by example. This is useful for quick learning, but leaves the precise limits of the definition unanswered. We know that this is a house, but what about this or this? We know that this is a dog, and this isn't, but what about this? The human mind has a basic desire to categorize things, that is, to put things into certain conceptual classes. It's part of how we learn, and serves valuable functions like providing information on a new thing based on other similar ones, saving mental time and effort. However, it can also be a problem, especially in ambiguous cases or ones in which people disagree. Many laws are written in a language open to some amount of interpretation. For a less weighty example, United Kingdom tax law establishes a different tax rate for cakes and biscuits, cookies to Americans, than for biscuits covered in chocolate. Jaffa cakes, despite the name, were not obviously in either category. So their manufacturer put forward and eventually won a case arguing they were cakes in order to avoid the additional tax. The lawmakers clearly had certain products in mind when these differing tax rates were established, and some products had elements of both but did not obviously fall into either category. There are countless examples of such legislation, and this ambiguity is one reason why courts exist. The law does not apply to some situation in a clear manner, so it's put up for debate and arguments are put forth in both directions. Even after the official decision is made, some people will probably disagree, and that's fine. Our different experiences and personalities cause people to come to different conclusions on many topics to which there is no logical answer. Disagreement is a fundamental part of participating in a society, and some level of it is healthy, as long as you don't take it too far or too personally. Ultimately, strict categories are a concoction of the human mind to describe things that have certain useful similarities, and there often is no right answer as to what precisely counts and what doesn't. So the next time someone tells you a Pop-Tart is a sandwich, ask them why and listen to their response. If they still sound just as stupid afterwards, maybe fight to the death about it later. It just might be a top strat.